Hi, I'm Jonathan Bromley, one of the trainers and consultants at Doulos, and I'm here to say something about observing activity in VMM and OVM test benches. What do I mean by observing activity? Well, when you put together a test bench, of course, your first concern is to make sure that you get data flowing through the device under test and interesting activity happening. But once you've made that happen, it's really important to grab hold of that information so that you can measure, check, gather coverage, make sure that things are not going wrong and so on. And that presents some interesting problems of its own, which we'll try to sketch out and see how the solutions are going to work, both in the verification methodology manual, VMM, approach and also in OVM, the Open Verification Methodology. So the kind of picture that you can see on this slide, I'm sure you've seen many times before because it's the kind of picture that everybody uses to describe the way you build a test bench in those methodologies. And the idea here is completely reasonable. Over on the left, you can see the part of the test bench that's generating stimulus for the device under test, and it's packaged as a verification component. But within that component, there are some subcomponents. We have a driver, which is going to wiggle the pins on the device under test. We have a stimulus source, which will take responsibility for creating an interesting stream of data for use by the pin driver. And we have a monitor that autonomously keeps an eye on what's happening on the device under test pins and gets that information into a form that's suitable for use elsewhere in the test bench. That whole block, the verification component, is often known as a piece of verification IP, intellectual property, and of course it's something that you could get from a third party provider or perhaps from elsewhere in your own organisation. Over on the right of the device under test, of course this is a device under test output, so we don't want to stimulate it, we only want to monitor it, and so we use a cut down version of a similar verification component with the stimulus source and the pin driver removed, and only the monitor there, so that it non-intrusively observes the DUT's output activity. VMM and OVM both fully support that sort of approach. However, there is a problem. Whenever you're building a test bench, as well as making things happen in the device under test, it's also rather important to make sure that you monitor those things and make sure they're happening correctly and make sure that all of the things that you wanted to happen really have happened. So you will need to add checker blocks and coverage collection blocks. Those things probably cannot be provided by the provider of the verification component because they're highly specific to your particular device under test. So we've got those checkers and collector components, but they need information. They need to know what's happening in the test bench, which means that you're going to have to be able to extract that information from the off-the-shelf verification components. You'll need to hook to some kind of monitoring points in those components to get the data into your specialised checker and coverage collector. You'll need to make connections a little bit like the arrows we're showing on the slide here. Of course, the problem here is that the writer of the verification component has no idea precisely what connections you're going to want to make. He doesn't even know how many such connections you're needing to make. And so therefore, that connection mechanism needs to be extremely flexible and adaptable. The technique that we use must be very careful not to impact the timing of any monitor block because those monitor blocks are busy watching activity on the device under test pins and they must be ready to observe any new activity at any time. It is completely inappropriate for the observation to interrupt that activity and stop it happening. Also, it's perfectly possible that you will not use all of the observation points that are provided by the VIP writer. So it's important that the observation methods should have no impact on the monitor's activity if you choose not to use them. But you may choose to connect many different observers to one of those monitoring points, and that must be possible as well. All of that can be done both in VMM and in OVM, and we'll take a detailed look at how it works in VMM and a rather briefer look at how it works in OVM during the rest of this session. So in VMM, the monitor component, like everything else in a VMM test bench, is derived from the VMM transactor base class. It has some sort of main loop inside it, which spends all of its time watching the bus, gathering transaction data, and when it has the transaction data available, it then makes it available for use by elsewhere in the test bench. 
Here's how we would do that in VMM. We would place a call to the VMM callback macro. Now, why a macro? It's actually quite a complicated piece of activity, so you don't want to be bothered with all of the details. All you do is specify that you want the callback to take place, you want the transaction to be available to the rest of the test bench, and you want that to be available through a function called observe. That name isn't special, we've chosen the name. You can use any name you like for that function. So we pass to the observe function the transaction object which has been collected by the monitor. Of course, that's no good unless that function exists somewhere. So, along with writing the monitor, we also write a callback extension, and the callback facade class that we create is shown at the bottom of this slide. It's an extension of the built-in VMM transactor callbacks class, and we provide it with one empty virtual function for each of the callbacks that we expect to invoke from our transactor. Remember, all of this is being done by the writer of the verification component. The writer of that component has no idea what's going to be done by that observe function. He simply provides a hook so that you can extend the observe function in the future. So what are you going to have to do then? Well, you have picked up this monitoring component. It's a piece of verification IP that you've got from your colleagues or from a third party and it's got the callback facade along with it. You can see the source code of the callback facade so you know that whenever you write a customized observer component you must create an observe function which is going to be given this transaction data when the monitor has seen it. You can create as many extensions of the callback facade class as you wish. Here I've suggested we've built a checker and a coverage collector component as two separate classes, both extending pin monitor callbacks. Each of them implements the observe function, which of course is given one of these transaction data objects as observed by the monitor, and you can then do anything you want with that transaction data object. Of course, it's no good simply writing the class. You've also got to make sure that that checker or coverage collector component actually exists in your test bench. So it's necessary to create an instance of it, and then it's necessary to connect that instance to the monitoring transactor using the append callback function of the transactor. Details of that are easy enough to find in VMM documentation and also in the note file that accompanies this video. For every callback extension that you register with the transactor using append callback, your observe callback function is now automatically called whenever the monitor enters that VMM callback macro. All of that is completely automated for you by VMM. So now let's take a look at how the same sort of idea works in OVM. Uh, we have other material on this, so Let's keep it fairly brief, but as you can see in OVM, we use a slightly different approach. OVM always expects to connect its components together using ports and exports. Another video in this series says more about that. For this purpose, we have a very specialized kind of port called an analysis port. And an analysis port has only one method, a write method. That write method is then passed on to a write method in your customized observer component, which of course then needs a corresponding analysis export that can be connected to the analysis port. The special characteristic of analysis ports in OVM is that it doesn't matter how many things you connect to them. You can have zero, one or more analysis exports connected to the same analysis port, unlike any other kind of port in OVM, which expects just one connection to just one export. Analysis ports also provide the non-blocking guarantee so that the monitor's activity is not interrupted. If you want to know any more about this or any other related methodology topics, take a look at the know-how section of the doulos.com website where you'll find some notes associated with this video, some other related videos and more. You can also on the Doulos website find information about our training courses and methodology services covering the whole range of languages and methodologies in the verification and design area.